So we're going to do a quick rundown of Google Doctopus. Doctopus is an add-on for Google Drive that allows you to share documents in a very time efficient manner with your students digitally. It acts like a photocopier, uh, but for digital documents and then adds a number of other features on top of that. Uh, to do it, I have to create a Google Sheet to start because Doctopus is an add-on specifically for, do for Google Sheets. If you don't already have it, you'll have to click Get Add-ons here. In my case, I have it here in my add-ons already ready to go. The first time I run this, I'm going to have to add a roster. Every other time that I run this, I'll be able to choose rosters that I've already created. But in this case, I haven't created one, so I'm going to do it right now. If I want to, I could use um, Google Classroom to ingest a roster of students that I already have in Google Classroom. Um, if I use that. In this case, I'm going to choose to add it just on this sheet. Notice if I wanted to, I could use a PARA's uh, teacher dashboard to pull from there. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to input what I want based on the students I have. And again, you can do this the first time and then set it and forget it. So it's asking me to fill in oops, the information for this student. And you can copy and paste this from a spreadsheet that you have of your students as well. So now I'm going to name my roster. And what it's going to ask me here is it's asking me what I would like my folder setup to look like. So it had a little glitch there, but now it's figured out this is what the folders would look like. It's asking me if I want to create these automatically, which I do. Creating these folders means that I'm going to have a really easy way to share documents with my students so that they have them in not just in their general drive, but in a specific folder for my classroom. It also will give me a class view and class edit folder. Class view meaning that I can put anything in there that I want to and the students can all see it but they can't touch it, they can't mess it up. So if I have a worksheet that I want them to copy or just some directions for a lab, they can see them without uh, making any edits to them. And a class edit folder where anybody in the class can edit anything in there. So it's created my folder and it's put the folder key here that's just reminding it of where the folder is specifically for this class that the student will be able to access my documents. And now it's gonna allow me to say what my document is. Normally this is the first step that you have. So I'm going to choose that I want each of my students to have the same exact document. If I had groups, I could choose to have uh, documents distributed based on groupings. Uh, if I wanted to differentiate, I could choose to have uh, three different or four different documents that I would like to distribute based on how I've labeled each student in the spreadsheet. Um, or I could have a document for the whole class to edit at once. But in this case, the normal way to go is simply individual, all the same, as if you were making copiers, copies at the copier like normal. Students for the whole class level, I don't want them to be able to see each other's work right now. I also want them to be able to edit their work, and I don't want them to change whether or not I'm uh, an editor on the work. Although if I want other collaborators and want them to be able to share with each other, I'll have to uncheck this box. And finally, I can add any co-teachers here that I want to in case I have colleagues who will be a part of this assignment as well. Now I'm going to need to find where my assignment is. I'm simply going to go in and choose what folder do I keep all my assignments in. And this is where, as a teacher, you'll have to stay organized and keep one place for all your assignments. So for me... Uh, what makes sense, I'm going to go through my drive right now and see, hmm, I wonder which of these has my document in it. Oh, it looks like there's a document here I could share that's actually in my drive. So I'm going to go back to folders. I'm going to just select my drive and say select. That means it's going to pull it from my drive. Again, normally you'll want to have this in an assignments folder specifically so you can go back to the same place every time to find it. So it's chosen my drive. I can choose from all the things in my drive right here. In that one folder, I'm going to choose this Super Bowl assignment, and that's the document that I want to distribute to all my students.
Now I get to choose two things. Number one, where are all these documents going to go? I only have one student in this class, of course, but if I had 30, I'd want all 30 documents to be in one folder in an easy place to find. So Doctopus has already created a folder for me in theory. I can tell it to create this. It will be called History, the name of the class, Untitled Spreadsheet, which unfortunately is my, my name here of this spreadsheet. So notice that you can name the spreadsheet your assignment title and that will make things easier for yourself. So I'm gonna name this actually Super Bowl Assignment. And then it also adds the date on the end, which is really helpful for me to know when this assignment was made. So I'm gonna go ahead and say create new folder. Again, it's automatically making this folder for me. So I can always go back to this uh, one folder to find all student work. And it's telling me that it put it in my teacher folder. So it didn't just put it generally in my drive, it put it specifically in my teacher folder. In terms of the file name, this is where I can add student names. So in this case, I have last name, first name. I'm going to put the title of the document. And I can add anything else that I want. I can add their email. I can add their folder key for some reason if I wanted that. Um, and simply in this case, I'm just going to leave it blank like that. So simply last name, first name, Super Bowl assignment. You'll want to make sure that you have clear naming conventions for your school and for your, at least for your grade level to make sure that students are naming things the proper way each time. Making sure they have their name on it is obviously key. So now it wants to just double check that everything is correct, that we've made the choices that we want to make, and that we're ready to share the documents. And I'll show you on the student side what this will look like in just a second. So here I'm going to review. Yes, it looks good. Let's run the copy. And it can show me how what my progress is. I can see in the spreadsheet that it's going to populate with the actual link to the document here. So I can see what, where the document is itself. Usually this will take about 10 to 15 minutes for a class of 30 students, depending on how quality your Wi-Fi is. Uh, in this case, this one seems to be done. It says all jobs complete. So I'm going to click manage and assess. The manage and assess tab is going to allow me to add things like a Gubric, which we'll add, talk about later in a different video, um, as well as to allow students to get their documents back. Um, in this case, actually before that, it gives me the option to embargo docs for grading. So if I don't want my students to have access anymore, I can freeze them and say, no, I need to grade them. And then I can transfer the ownership back to them so they actually own the document at the end. In this case, let's look at the student side. Here I've got this student. I'm going to refresh their drive page to see what this looks like. Now notice that they don't see their history folder. The first time that they get their folders, it's going to be in shared with me. So they're going to see class view and their history folder. They're going to have to add both of those to their drive. And that means that they're now forever part of their drive. And usually what I'll recommend to schools is making sure that you have at least the year folder for your students. And then within that year folder, I would have the specific topic or the specific uh, class, sorry. So in this case, I'm going to go back to class view oops, and the history folder, drop them into 2015, 16 and then drop them into history. So now they're nice and organized. My students are organized. Here's the breakdown, pretty easy to get to. So in history, I've got my specific folder for this student. This student can open it up and look, there's their assignment right away. When they pull it open, they can make any edits they want. The teacher can also see it. And as a teacher, I'm going to go into my history folder for my class. And I'm going to look at from my assignment side. Here's that Super Bowl assignment. And I'm going to see, oh, here's Joe's work. And I can see that he's actually working on it currently and what he's working on. There's his answer. There's his face showing up to show me that he's actually working on it right now. Doctopus has a couple other functions that I'll share with you briefly so you can see. Uh, when we take a look at the specifics of uh, this document, we can see a few extra things. So this is where uh, Classroom also does not have the same level of sophistication that Doctopus has. We can see word count, how many words Joseph has put on his document, how many times he's revised it. 
how many comments eyes the teacher have made, how many comments students have made on his specific file, um, how many peer comments that he's made, um, how many resolved comments that he has had. Uh, so if I've made a comment in his a paper of or something that he needs to change, how many of those has he gone through and actually resolved and said that he changed? Um, peer files commented, how many has he gone on to comment? Um, and co sorry, how many files he's commented on in terms of other peer work or how many comments on peers work he has made. And finally, I can insert grade or written feedback. So again, a lot of these are pretty cool uh, to be able to keep track of data in terms of what your students are doing and get a quick check and how they're collaborating with each other. So that's the basics of Doctopus. Again, I've got a nice folder here with all my assignments in it. Um, and lastly, you can see here, I also have all of my student folders. They'll be listed in alphabetical order. So anything that my students put in those folders, I easily have access to.